guys, what's going today? I uh, took the knotter off. Give you guys a little better view. Kind of what I was talking about. Is this, if I can get this sit on different. My cardboard workbench is not working very well. It's this plate here that I was trying to explain. You can see it in here, you can't see it real well, but the needle's rubbing on it too. And all the other knotters, you can't, that's not, not even close for, a, for your needle to rub on it. So that's why I don't understand why this one is so much different. So I'm going to tear the otter off the baler back there and maybe take a couple of them off. Take the best out of whatever ones I got back there. And another suggestion, Ryan has yeah, three pipe acres. My bill hook was froze up, but it's not. You can see that turns. Everything's, well, this is a pretty new knotter, so. Everything's pretty, pretty loose and everything's, it's uh, greased and I don't know. So it's nothing sticking. It's just out of time, I'm thinking. So I can get it figured out. Or just put a different order on there and see if that works. So I'm not going to at all by any means throw this one away. It's just that. Understanding why it's not sitting the way it should be. So, all right, well, a little more reading in the book here. All right, guys. <clears throat> I'm going to try to readjust this one. I basically see nothing wrong with it. I did take a couple otters off the old baler. And Eric, come and help me. We test the solenoids. There's one right here. They all checked out. For ohms. But we switched it. Anyways, it's still reading the same code, so I'm not quite sure. Like we were talking, there might be an O-ring or something inside that control block. That's bad. Or it's the um, uh, sensors on each side. They're weight sensors and they feel the pressure of the chamber and then they help calibrate your chamber pressures. Then we also took that air valve off there and took the old one off the other baler. And the other one, the original one for this one, leaked. We took them both apart, cleaned them both up. So now we got that working. So. Now, at least, this manifold here, that pipe, and these lines coming down, they'll keep their knotters clean. So, I'm not exactly sure. It's computer RAM, but I, what I remember is it's so many revolutions, plunger revolutions, and it tells it a uh, signal to open that valve up and it blasts the uh, air on the knotters. It works pretty good. The old one worked great. I know this one did not work last year. That's, I think, why this knotter here kind of screwed up because I was bailing the straw. And if we bail anything, it's you're going to have chaff and everything else piling up on them. So. But I'm going to try to get this one adjusted. See if I can make a tie yet. So Yeah, so that's what I've been up to. So I'm going to work on getting this one adjusted. I replaced the, there's a 90 fitting, these are grease lines here. This one was uh, blown out. The guts came out of this one, so I took one off the old knotters and so that way everything's getting greased again and it's right here. You just put your grease gun on and there's a block back there that distributes your grease to all your 
lines. So, yeah. So I guess the knotters, let me get that one adjusted. And we'll see what happens, I guess. If I can get it to tie a knot or not. Here's the old knotters. So oh, yeah. Believe me, I took it off, so. They were, your discs, my disc, uh, the discs were a little bit rusty, but they were a little stuck. I got had to work them a little bit, but I got everything freed up. They've just done a lot more work than what the, the other knotter has done, so I figured I'd give that one a, another chance, and uh, if it doesn't work, then I'll swap it out with one of these knotters, so. I got four knotters, so sooner or later I'll get one to work, right? <laughs> All right, I come in the closet here and I broke a bail on the floor. And uh, I got the tie. I'm not saying I'm completely out of the woods yet, but let's see if she makes another knot. someone about something here last night and I thought about this uh, show you guys that maybe some of you guys are wondering uh, how does it get air pressure so pretty simple design just got a pulley by the flywheel it runs your air compressor and then just there's a plastic line that runs up and over to your tank and it just runs continuously um, there is a overload valve on there, and yeah, so that's how that works. So, if anybody's kind of wondering about well, how do you get air pressure to clean your knotters, so pretty simple. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, putting twine in now, so throw that in, getting ready. Um, never called me up today, so see what uh, what tomorrow brings. So. All right, well, I'm gonna keep loading twine up here. Grinding corn, too, that's what the noise is all about, so. Figured I'd uh, add this, too, I guess. This here is your uh, hydraulic pump that runs the hydraulics on your baler, so the baler runs itself. Uh, right there is your reservoir. The uh, only thing it runs off the tractor is to lift up your Pick up attachment in your uh, last Bailey jack. So, yeah. So, it's all the twine I'm gonna put in. I like these balls of twine better. Uh, they're bigger and they're a little more, uh, a little more stronger. So, this is only 400 and I'm 450. That's foot pounds. Yeah. They were all out of twine, of this twine, when I went and got last time, so I got the 4,400. So, now we got the 5,450. Yeah! So, enough twine for me for this year, probably. So.
an egg ginger. Huh? You gonna get out again tonight? Are ya? I did last night though. The other two nights he did. Well, and there's a the sheep. Yeah. Let's go, Ginger. Time to go outside. Come on, Corbin. Hip. Come on. Hip. Good enough for a video here. Let's see what uh, goes on tomorrow and the next day. Come on, girls, get up. Hit. Okay, thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next one.